hi welcome back to my channel well in this video i'll be doing a demonstration regarding a very important technique of multivariate analysis that is known as cluster analysis where we are interested uh, to identify groups or patterns within within a data set based on some similarities or dissimilarities actually this technique is used to gain insights into the complex data set especially the multivariate type of data sets and uh, support decision making processes in various fields like or data mining pattern recognition or sometimes market segmentation but as far as the agricultural sciences is concerned this cluster analysis is widely used in uh, plant breeding and genetics where we have large number of genotypes and we want to evaluate those genotypes based on various number of characteristics or uh, you know, we can say the parameters or where we are interested to identify the groups or the patterns uh, of various genotypes uh, with respect to the variables taken under consideration so in order to proceed i'll be using two important libraries which uh, actually are uh, also used in case of uh, principal compound analysis for that i'll be using two important libraries that is known as library facto extra and the second one is library Facto minor, and in order to perform this uh, cluster analysis, I'll be using a data set which is already imported on my R console that is carrot data. Let us see this data. Let us first see the dimensions of data, how many rows and columns we have. Actually, this uh, we have 32 rows and 6 columns. This data consists of 32 genotypes each having an information of six variables one is the root yield dry matter number of leaves a shoot length root length and total total uh, carotene the reference of this uh, data set can be given in the description and uh, it is actually a paper written by khan and me 2007 so we have 32 genotypes and we have six variables and we want to group these two 32 genotypes based on these six important characteristics or variables so uh, let us first see the first few rows and columns of our data so you can see these are some of the first few or uh, first few rows or columns of our data set since uh, we have six variables and all these six variables are measured on different uh, units so let us first do certain a uh, bit of scaling so that to make them the data set uniform it is a similar thing that we do use to do the normalization or the standardization of the data uh, so let us give some name to this function and we'll be using this scale and we're going to scale our original data set and the name of the original data set is carrot so let us see the height of this tf so you can see totally the structure of the data set is totally changed you can see the root yield in case of the american beauty or this is the name of the genotype is 7.31 but in this case of scaling when we have done scaling it's point zero point zero. so we are done with the scaling the next thing is to compute a dissimilarity matrix for that we'll be using a function a name actually it is not a name of a function just giving a name to a function and this is actually the default function that is dist dist is used uh, this function computes and returns the distance matrix computed by using the specified distance measures to compute the distance between the rows of a data matrix so within this we'll be using this the name of this uh, scale data and the method which we'll be using is euclidean widely used frequently used method then we will click on this uh, run then what we will do next the next thing is we'll be using we are more interested to compute uh, to to make a dendrogram which uh, will give us an idea uh, or which give us an uh, recognition about the identification of the groups or the patterns in the data set so for that we will give some name to the function and followed by is equal to our assignment operator will be using a default h plus uh, this is a default uh, function for hierarchical clustering uh, it actually performs the hierarchical cluster analysis on a set of dissimilarities and the method of analyzing it 
then within this we'll be using this function resds which is already uh, done the previous step then followed by in this case the method will be in within inverted commas what dot b2 what's distance actually then uh, since we are done with uh, this res then what we will do we will try to make a plot of this then res dot hc then let's do some customization to it so we'll be having a, a dendrogram uh, which is not quite uh, enter which is not quite interactive or we cannot say as far as the data visualization is concerned this doesn't give a good uh, visualization of uh, our data set so we are having uh, we are having a hierarchical pattern here but uh, not able to recognize to which uh, particular uh, group to which particular cluster a particular phenotype belongs so let us proceed further so since we are done with this plot uh, let us uh, apply the game in clustering for that we'll use some name is equal to an e plus is a default function which is used to, to visualize enhancement of cluster analysis and provide a solution for enhancing the workflow of cluster analysis then within this we will write the name of the scale data and within inverted comma since we are interested to perform the game means cluster then we giving some and stat is equal to 25 we'll be expecting an error here the reason is that we have not typed the inverted commas here then we'll be having uh, a very good plot with a very good amount of information so we have a plot which is quite informative let us zoom it out so based on this e cluster uh, function this has divided this whole data set or these 32 genotypes based on these six characters into five clusters one two three four and five and uh, these genotypes are similar to each other with respect to uh, taking into consideration the six variables and these in the green color they are similar these are similar these German and C4 is similar and only C44 this is totally different uh, from all these but the good thing is that this uh, class these clusters are this clustering K mean clustering is done uh, done based on this uh, actually we have two information here one is pertains cluster analysis here you can identify how many clusters we automatically there are five and at the same time we have a output on horizontal axis uh, this dim one is nothing this is the component first of principal component analysis so it performs k means cluster as well as the principal component analysis so here you can see based on this data the data set 73 uh, percent of the variations explained by the first component and 9.2 by the second but let us use an another very important uh, function here let us type here fvi search underscore gap stat this is a function for determining determining and visualizing the optimal number of cluster actually it partitions uh, or we can say the partitioning matters such as came in clustering uh, clustering requires the user to specify the number of clusters to be generated but this is not uh, here we don't need to specify it will automatically create a plot but you can see oh, how many optimum number of clusters you need to uh, you 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 are uh, required in a particular uh, data set then gap stat and within this we'll be using this function which we have already uh, mentioned in the previous step then dollar sign again we will write gap underscore stat so we'll be having a plot where we can say how many optimal number of clusters are good to divide this data set or to identify the number of groups or the patterns within the data based on the similarities or dissimilarities then uh, what the final uh, step is that let us write this res.km this is the function which we have then we will put this uh, cluster uh, dollar sign here let us see 
in first cluster we have 11 genotypes in second cluster we have two in third we have 10 genotypes and in eight uh, sorry in fourth we have eight cluster and in the last fifth we have 11 uh, one cluster sorry then if i will write only this res dot km so we will having a lot of information here you can see you can simply this amr beauty it pertains to the first cluster c108 pertains to third cluster c109 it pertains to fourth cluster so if we will write it like this res dot uh, km then we will put uh, this dollar sign here we can also find the centers of our clusters okay then uh, we can also write clusters here like this or we will simply if you will uh, type this cluster plot will be having the same plot which was displayed previously but we are more interested to create a, a dendrogram uh, because the previous dendrogram which was made just few yes this uh, we, we want a this type of a dendrogram but on that type of a dendrogram where all these groups uh, they should be visible these genotypes will be visible uh, in, in context to which group they belong for that we will write f b i insert underscore d and d then within that we will use that function r yes dot r e uh, c then a certain bit of customization 0 0.5 then since we have already decided or optimal number of clusters for this is 5 then we will use color labels by means of these 5 clusters we will write is equal to true let us see what kind of so we are having a dendrogram which looks quite interactive and here you can see this is the this is the last cluster or we can say this is the first second third fourth and fifth cluster and uh, in that plot also this c44 was totally different from rest of the cluster so in this cluster we have only one genotype so this uh, uh, these two pack these two uh, libraries that is facto extra and facto minor they have a very good uh, implementation as far as plus principal compound analysis is concerned and as far as this cluster analysis is also concerned so hope uh, you will like this video and if you have any questions or comments you can post them on the comment section below thank you very much